All right, welcome to the guide on scaling a tune. This is going to be a part uh, one of three. I know I don't do these too often, but uh, for the sake of sanity and keeping this a little bit shorter, um, we're going to go ahead and break it down into three parts. So part one here is going to be scaling 101. It's going to cover the concept and uh, basically how to choose a scale setting and, and uh, reasons why you'd scale. So uh, go ahead and stay tuned. Uh, it's going to be a three-part series, and I'll get these out as fast as I can. But uh, scaling 101, so we're going to go uh, into this and ba the basics of scaling. Before we continue, the information contained in this video is for educational purposes only. Any modifications and tuning of engines can have undesirable consequences if done improperly. Before attempting any modification, please do your own research and or consult a professional. Calibrating procedures learned in this video are done at your own risk and any damage or liability is your own responsibility. Alright, so for the overview of scaling part one, scaling 101. Um, basically we're going to go over real quick. Uh, the reasons to scale, the concept um, behind everything, and then we're going to determine the scale setting. So this is important uh, before we move on into the actual tuning um, as to understand the concepts, determine the scale setting, and uh, of course uh, this will affect everything else as uh, we go into uh, the rest of it. I'll explain why um, later in the video. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering uh, what these reasons are, like uh, if you need a scale or not. You maybe, um, maybe you know you need a scale and uh, you, you're looking for a good tuto tutorial on it, so you found the right one. Um, but uh, if you don't know, the reason we're going to scale is because typically we're going to run, uh, if we're going to run a math setup, we're, we're running out of math, uh, um, actual hitting the hard code limit of 512 grams a second. We're running out of table. Um, the other reason, uh, the other thing here, this does, no, keep in mind, this doesn't actually mean the map frequency. So if you're actually maxing the map frequency out at 13,000 or something, um, then you're also, you're also going to actually need a bigger map. So this, uh, the scale will not actually fix that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, the other reason, uh, of course, uh, to gain more depth on their spark, spark maps. So um, if you're hitting the uh, 1.2 grams a cylinder all the way to the bottom row, um, this is a good way to get uh, more resolution on your spark table. Like basically, you're, not, you're running out of uh, table, uh, so this will reduce the calculated air mass and basically put you in a different place on the spark table, on that whole spark map. So, um, the, and again, the 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 reason these two things will occur is because of injectors. It starts with injector data. So the bigger the in actual injectors you install, the uh, the more likely you're going to need to scale, and and the bigger they go, the more you'll need to scale. So that's keep that in mind. So it all starts with injectors. Uh, so the bigger the injector, aka the the more if you actually need them, as in you have actual more airflow, you're actually going to probably have to scale it down to get it to stay within the hard code limits on all your uh, sensors. Um, but uh, without further ado, we'll get into actually how to do this and uh, talk about concepts next. All right. So the concept here, um, the reason I'm putting this in is to beat this up a lot because uh, the video that I'm doing right now for the tutorial is going to cover the 0411 PCM. However, this uh, scaling procedure can be done on other PCMs uh, as so long as you understand the concept behind it. So without further ado, on modern EFI cars, the PCM or the computer uh, does not physically know anything about your engine. So at the end of the day, we can change any calculation we want in the PCM. Uh, so long as we tell it the right information so keeping this in mind so we change everything um, don't worry if it says eight liter we can make it think it's a four liter um, in, in essence uh, so the only thing that happens um, the only thing that matters really at the end of the day uh, is that the PCM achieves the proper AFR and the proper spark maps so, you know uh, we meet our goals uh, so we get it within the hard code limits that's really all that matters um, the numbers used to achieve them are largely irrelevant uh, it doesn't matter if it's a 80 power injector um, that we can tell it it's a 40 and uh, on a map uh, on a V map of uh, let's say a hundred we can tell it that now that it's 50 and uh, really at the end of the day it doesn't really matter it just changes the calculation for load um, so the so long as we're within the hard code limits and that we get the AFR we want on the desired spark map we want it doesn't matter what the numbers really are so uh, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at here um, with the reality um, so we model it to reality um, 80 pound injector slope you know if it flowed 80 and uh, at one point and 60 at another it needs to reflect that 30 and 40 respectively so the slope remains the same so the reality is still the same uh, so we we shouldn't have any issues with our AFR targets um, it also means that we can control what the computer thinks the engine size is as well as all the data in the tune file 
we cannot change the limits of the PCM. We can't change that 512 hard code or the 1.2 grams of cylinder. We can't change that. So we can, but what we can do is change the calculation so it ends up being different um, at the end of the day that the result is different. So we actually can use the entire table. Um, we can change the number it thinks it's seeing, basically that calculated number at the end of the day. That's what we're aiming to change. So uh, we'll get right into the, a couple more visuals of the concept here in a sec. All right, so for a more visual idea of what's happening here, so we have our air mass models. Um, so air mass, the air coming in, we have this modeled on MAF or VE. If you read over on the right, it's kind of uh, pretty much from the stock form, you have a blended model, and this can be based MAF and VE based. Of course, cylinder, cylinder air mass is the actual load on the engine. So that's what, what it comes down to is this, is this affects what the calculated load is as well as uh, all the torque calculations as well. That's not alone though, because also the fuel has something to do with that as well. Because if you look down here, we have our cylinder air mass has to get divided by the commanded AFR, and that's going to be times the flow rate. So this comes into play. So our fuel model as well has to be has to jive with our air mass model, and of course that goes into this cylinder, uh, the actual size of the cylinder, which in this case is going to be one liter or a thousand grams, and it's going to give us a calculated load. What this also means, the calculated load is how much is going to be the calculated spray of the injectors. If we reduce all of this equally, we should end up with something that actually comes out to the same AFR, but at a different target. So basically the target's gonna be chopped in half, the air mass will be chopped in half, and the flow rate will be chopped in half. It will result in half our target or calculated load. Um, so reality for this formula here, this is just conceptual, let's just get an idea. So think about, it knows how much air is in there, it knows what you want for fuel, so it multiplies that, it bases that on the flow rate, multiplies that, and it gives a, a basically a sprayed pulse, a target for fueling. Uh, so that's that's what the PCM needs to know. Um, reality, of course, involves the RPM, the IFR, the MAF, the VE, the, the bias, the injector timing, the internal factors and transient fuels, and all this other stuff goes into the actual formula, which makes it much more complicated than as, as pictured here, which is why it's not the actual. But it's something along those lines. Just get an idea. It's similar to this. So that's kind of what I wanted to point out here on, the, on, on this slide. So of course here you have the PCM actually knows the volume of the engine. We can tell it this and it knows the models. We can tell it that. It knows the size and flow. We can tell it the fuel model. And of course if it's in closed loop it's going to actually know the AFR as well. And this is going to come into play later for torque or the air mass calculations as well. It's, it's kind of like an, another checksum. Um, everything above of course results in the calculated load. This is the big number um, that we need to affect because this is what's affecting our, our charts or our, our tables and what's running us out on the map table. We're running out of, out, of, out of this number because 512 grams a second is another way of saying calculated load. Um, it's calculating 512 grams a second of load, which will translate into the actual grams per cylinder, which is the real load number. However, um, that is base, if it's map based, it's coming from the math. Uh, so, of course, basically anything in any of these units needs to be scaled. Um, that's in grams, pounds an hour, or foot pounds. Basically, anything that has to do with airflow or fuel must be scaled accordingly. Um, uh, some has to be shifted, and we'll cover that later. But uh, this is the basic concept of what's happening normally. This is a scaled tune. As we look at this, we've scaled it half half the amount. So we pulled. This would be known as a 50% scale. So if we have half the model of the air half the model of the fuel and half the size of the cylinder, we should get the same calculated, or get half the uh, calculated load at the same AFR, basically. So we've changed these factors. This AFR should remain the same, but the calculated load comes out half the amount. So this means to understand some degree of the cylinder air mass, how it's calculated. Um, if we have all the numbers, it's gonna turn it into basically um, half the calculation at the end of the day. So it's gonna come at the half the result. Uh, which is what exactly what we wanted to do. That's the whole idea behind doing this. Um, what will change is the perceived load or basically what it thinks it's seeing. Um, in reality, we know it's 50%. Uh, whereas what used to be 512 now is reading 256 at the same AFR. And the spark map that used to read 1.2 grams a cylinder is now reading 0.6 because it's half the, half the result. So that's what we're actually doing when we scale a tune. We're actually just changing that calculation to read a different number at the output side. And of course, that's going to affect where it ends up on our tables, how much math sensor table we have left, and of course, uh, our spark maps as well, and anything that references load. 
um, aka torque or grams per cylinder or in the maps case the grams per second or pounds per hour etc again it's going to affect all of that that's the whole point of scaling a tune and so this applies across the board to any car that's gm and load based on the grams per cylinder which applies to gen 4s and, 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 and later models as well all right so Speaking of tune scale settings, so we can pick a whole lot of different numbers. We can scale to basically any percent we want, but basically we're going to want to round it off to make things easier to make the math line up a little better. You're going to see a lot, uh, a lot of that later and why uh, certain numbers, numbers work better than others. 50% um, is by far the easiest uh, amount to scale, but if you don't have to go all the way to 50%, I don't recommend going that far because some tables don't respond well to, uh, to scaling, particularly idle, things like that. If you do scale at 50%, you're going to find you lose a lot of resolution on your models in a lot of places where the numbers um, aren't ju just aren't far enough apart because you're chopping everything down uh, 50%, so it'll only go half as far up the table. So you're actually going to lose some resolution if you go too far. So uh, you want to pick the correct amount. So uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, on the next slide. Um, but, but takeaway from this is uh, the chosen percent must apply to the entire team. Do not change the number later. Uh, so the important areas um, also noted an honorable mention here is torque management and reduction areas as well. Don't forget about these tables because they are torque um, uh, calculations. Uh, and that will affect the automatic crowd a lot more than it will ever anybody else. Um, the uh, percent is typically chosen based on the air mass that the hard code limit has been exceeded. We'll talk about that on the next slide. All right, so how to determine how much we need to scale is... Uh, it's actually pretty easy. So we're going to determine our maximum air mass calculated basically from the scanner um, and assume a slightly higher number than that. We just round it up uh, to whatever the easier scale to do is. Um, and if 50% is that number, then use 50. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and uh, just show uh, a different example. But uh, we're going to divide that maximum air mass uh, from the spark tables into the number that we see in the scanner. So 1.2 is typical of a Gen 3 for the maximum from the spark table. So for this example, let's say we see 1.4 grams of cylinder in the scanner at redline. Um, okay, so if we divide 1.2 into 1.4, which is that this number from the scanner, we're going to see that we are basically going to need to scale it at least 85% to get the 1.4 under 1.2. So a 20% scale here is rounded up because this is 15%. We'll round it up to 20, and it'll be more than enough to cover and get our, our calculated underneath 1.2. Okay, so for this example here, I'm not um, going to show a full red line because I don't have any because uh, I haven't taken the car all the way to uh, red line in gear at 180 or anything like that in this case, uh, but we can just make a few assumptions here. So right here we're seeing that we're actually maxing out the table at about 4400 RPM. A few assumptions can be made. You can assume that it's only going to climb from there. Uh, so, But right here, the last number we're seeing is 1.27. It's the highest we're seeing, but we can see that the 1.2 limit has been exceeded. We're over the uh, the amount of calculated uh, air mass or calculated load. We we've exceeded it, so we can assume a few things here. And without taking the car all the way to redline, we just round this number up a couple of points. We go up to like say 1.4, and probably get us pretty close and keep us on the table the entire time. Um, if we take it at 1.4 or even 1.5, we can pretty much make that assumption. So without telling you to take the car all the way to redline, because I don't recommend that without a dyno. Um, and are on the street per se, uh, per se. Um, just round this number up um, and, uh, and scale it accordingly to get it down to where you're gonna get, get some resolution out of your spark table. All right, so as we saw in our example, we were hitting 1.27, but however, we were hitting that at 4,400 RPM. Um, so we can go ahead and round that up, like I was saying, um, up to 1.4. So it's basically all the same and telling you don't take the car out to Redline, don't go out and get yourself in trouble going 170 miles an hour down the road trying to hit red line to see where your grams per cylinder are maxing out. There's a few reasons, obvious reasons not to do that. Um, and clearly I'm telling you not to, um, but just go ahead and for the sake of safety, just use a different number. Just, just round this up um, to, in this case, we're going to use 1.4. And in that case, we can go ahead and, and assume a 20% scale. So for the rest of the series, as we go through, we're going to use 20% for the entire series. We're going to scale everything by 20%. The reason I'm ch choosing for 20% here is to uh, show a little more difficult um, scale. And that way, uh, when you go to try to, if you say if you need to do 50%, um, it'll be a lot easier for you um, to actually do 50. 
uh, but 20% will show the harder version um, so that way uh, we can see the hard way and uh, and uh, basically see that throughout this entire series we're going we're gonna to use 20% from here on out so that's going to be the number I'm picking uh, for the series and that's what I'm going to show um, as far as how to scale all the same tables will be uh, basically what you whatever your number is um, you apply that to your tune based on uh, determining what you need to scale by so if you're at like 1.6 here then obviously 20% will not work for you but uh, again um, rest of the series will be 20% and uh, we will uh, show that in the next videos um, and how to adjust that for the actual uh, uh, tune and where what, what tables and we'll go through in detail each table um, through the engine and so on, so forth for a Gen 3 0411. All right, so that's uh, that's it for part one. Um, the conclusion here is un basically what I want to reiterate is understanding the concept of the scale is more important than the step-by-step -step walkthrough. Um, if you actually understand the concept, you can apply this to following generations and uh, where when it may be required. Um, and not all the PCMs are the same, so like a P59 is not the same as a 411, etc. So the step-by-step -step walkthrough may not work for everyone. Uh, that's the idea behind uh, actually getting the concept down. Um, selecting the correct scale setting as well uh, will help eliminate complications later. Is maintain as much resolution as possible without exceeding hard code limits. So don't go more than you need. That's the point here um, because it will add some some complications and make it a little more temperamental on some other of the table uh, some of the other tables like particularly idle. It's where you might have some issues. Uh, so again don't scale it more than you need um, so another point to this video um, so of course this concludes part one of three um, so next coming up um, is going to be the uh, engine uh, tables as we go through and actually set them uh, to a particular scale in this case we are going to use a 20 percent scale so we will scale the entire tune by 20 percent we'll go through and uh, just show you how to do that um, of course uh, part three is going to be for the transmission uh, we'll go through that um, as well for uh, anybody with an automatic uh, car if you don't have an automatic, uh, then part three probably won't be uh, something you need to watch. But um, for now, uh, this all this takes care of part one. So uh, um, stay tuned uh, for part two. Um, um, it will be uh, it will be the link in the description as soon as I uh, get that thing up.